Hey, what is up guys? So if you haven't seen already, there was a Instagram post on white veganism and many of you have asked me to respond to it. The post is in multiple slides, like that's the format of the post. So I'm just going to be going through the post slide by slide and giving my overall thoughts. Just a disclaimer, this post was not made by a vegan account, but the positions that are put forth in the actual post I've seen held by many intersectional vegans. And obviously that doesn't mean that every single intersectional vegan holds these positions, but I just wanted to say that in case some people think that I'm responding to intersectional veganism as a whole. I'm not, I'm just responding to this post and what it has to say about white veganism. So the first slide says, you can't preach for animal rights while ignoring human rights. I want to give this slide some context because I'm aware of what they're referring to, but I don't believe that what they are referring to even exists to a massive degree. And I also think they are coming from a place of misunderstanding. So they are referring to vegans who primarily advocate for animal rights in their vegan activism and really just make a conscious effort to keep their activism focused on animals. A lot of them will do this because historically, animals have rarely ever had a real movement behind their own rights. To do this isn't to quote unquote, ignore human rights issues or just view human rights issues as non-issues. It is to be very intentional with your animal rights activism and making it strictly about animals. And to be clear, when I say animals, I mean non-human animals. There's a lot of people that end up saying like, oh, well, aren't you know humans animals, therefore veganism is about humans as well. Obviously, veganism is about non-human animals. I just have to make this point because the way a lot of intersectional vegans and intersectional non-vegans view animal rights activists who primarily focus their activism on animals, to me, is just not accurate. If a social justice activist decides to primarily focus their activism on racism and the struggles that African-Americans experience in particular areas, I wouldn't consider that person to be ignoring animal rights issues or viewing animal rights issues as non-issues. It would just show me how they have decided to spend their time with respect to activism. In order for me to determine if a person is ignoring animal rights issues or views certain issues of oppression as non-issues, you would have to take a much deeper dive into a person's mind with respect to certain issues that you think the person is ignoring. Now, are there vegans who are racist and consciously ignore human rights issues? Absolutely, they do exist. But my point here is that intersectionals and intersectional vegans usually make the point of this slide to vegans, which the point does not even apply to. And I just wanna say that most vegans I know who do maintain a primary focus on animals within their animal rights advocacy also care about the plight of agricultural workers and also human rights issues, but they just view those things as separate from animal rights and therefore don't include it in their animal rights advocacy. So the second slide says, prioritizing the rights and well-being of animals while ignoring human rights, especially agricultural workers, is a symptom of white veganism. So I've already covered the misperception I believe these intersectional vegans are operating from when they make this whole ignoring human rights while being an animal rights activist point, but I do want to cover the label white veganism. I don't understand why the word white is being used to describe the kind of veganism they're describing. What I would call it instead is focused veganism or veganism because veganism is technically about non-human animals. Now, the vegans who are actually ignoring human rights issues and view them as non-issues and literally only think that animals matter, for example, misanthropes, or maybe even racist, transphobic, or sexist vegans, when it comes to them, why can't we just refer to them as, you know, misanthropic vegans, or in the case of a racist vegan, a sexist vegan, or a transphobic vegan, we just say, you know, they're a racist, sexist, and transphobic vegan. Why does the word white have to be the adjective used? I also know vegans who are people of color that primarily focus their activism on animals. Are these people of color vegans that are practicing white veganism? What if a person of color is a total transphobe and views trans problems as not problems at all? Are they practicing white veganism or are they just a transphobic vegan? Okay, slide three says, white veganism preaches a lifestyle centered around liberating animals, but ignores issues like the exploitation of indigenous farmers for popular vegan foods, local farmers being unable to compete with lower prices of high demand foods set by large agricultural corporations, for example, chickpeas, and the degradation of land and resources, for example, water, used to popularize vegan foods like almond milk and soy products. Okay, so I want to make a distinction here between a movement ignoring something and not including something. For the first part of this slide to actually be accurate, it should just say 
Veganism preaches a lifestyle centered around liberating animals and does not include issues like the exploitation of indigenous farmers, etc. This is very similar to how the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter don't include animal rights. This doesn't mean people in these movements just inherently are ignoring animal rights. Sure, some of them do, but affiliating with an activist group whose sole focus is one specific issue does not mean that you are engaging in ignoring other issues or viewing them as non-issues. You're just keeping, for example, the Me Too movement focused on one specific group in need of help, which is what it was designed for in the first place. The exploitation of indigenous farmers for popular foods, examples, avocados. So saying that vegans are responsible for this exploitation of farmers is total nonsense because less than 1% of the world's population is vegan. So to say that vegans are responsible for this exploitation of agricultural workers in plant agriculture is complete nonsense because 99% of people buying the plants and buying crops are non-vegans. And guess what? I don't see a single non-vegan speaking out against the injustices towards avocado farmers. I have not seen that once. So stop putting the blame on vegans for this. The second issue they say that white veganism ignores is local farmers being unable to compete with lower prices of high demand foods set by larger agricultural corporations. Example, chickpeas. Once again, this isn't anything that white veganism ignores. This is just a general trend in society that yeah, we should all work towards fixing, but that doesn't debunk veganism. It's the same thing with animal products. It costs way more money to go purchase from a local farmer than it does to purchase Tyson factory farmed meat. So does that mean non-vegans who ignore that are practicing white meat eating? This is just how every industry works. Buying a t-shirt off of a local supplier who makes the shirts in their bedroom is going to cost more than buying a t-shirt from Amazon, a large corporation. And then the last thing they say that white veganism ignores is the degradation of land and resources, example water, used to supply popularized vegan foods like almond milk and soy products. Once again, this point has no validity given that 77% of the world's soy is not fed for vegan products. It's not fed to humans, it's fed to livestock to fatten them up so then we can kill them for meat, dairy, and eggs. So if you care about water being used in the production of soy, the number one thing you could do is go vegan. Not to mention that animal agriculture in general is an extremely water intensive industry, far more than plant agriculture. If you just take a look at this graph, you'll see how much less water intensive a plant-based diet is compared to an animal product-based diet. White veganism also excludes black, indigenous, and people of color. It paints an image that promotes whiteness around veganism. Now, this picture is from Shutterstock. If you just go on Google Images, which is what I think most people use, and look up vegan person, you'll see that you get a very nice variety of people. All right, so next slide. To promote the animal rights narrative, certain examples of activism directly compare animal agriculture to racism and genocide. So when it comes to this topic, I mean, obviously there is comparisons you can make between animals being viewed as property and commodities and people in the past being viewed as property and commodities. Does this mean that humans being enslaved and animals being enslaved are equally as bad? That depends on your views and if you believe in sentient hierarchies and if you think that you know humans have higher moral value than animals because they have a higher capacity to experience well-being. But is making these comparisons actually really problematic? I mean, it certainly offends a lot of people, but it is true to say that animals, by definition, are enslaved. And I would also argue that the human supremacy that vegans are trying to show to people is actually shown and proven and reinforced when we have a case where a word actually applies to what animals are going through, like slavery, and then you have people saying like, oh, they don't get to use that word. That to me is pretty speciesist and very indicative of the human supremacy that vegans are trying to point out. Like why does the word only apply to humans when in reality, the word literally by definition applies to animals as well. The next slide just is kind of on top of the previous slide saying, this is extremely inappropriate and insensitive to these groups and shows a picture of Jewish people in the Holocaust being compared to chickens. Now, not that I think this really matters at all, but I am a Jewish person. So maybe if it matters to you, Hearing that I'm Jewish will make you digest the noises that I'm about to make more openly. Just like I said about slavery, there are obvious comparisons you can make 
between what happened to the Jews in World War II and what's happening to animals. Does it offend certain people? Yes, it does. And does it also captivate other people and make them really think about what they're supporting? Yes, I mean, no one has data on like what is more effective and what isn't. And I know this slide isn't really about what is more effective. It's more about, you know, uh, this is just offensive and there's groups of people that are offended by certain kinds of vegan activism. But the fact is that there are things that you can compare between the animal holocaust and the holocaust of World War II. And yes, I said animal holocaust because the word actually applies to what animals are going through. And I'm not really a speciesist, so I'm gonna sit here and say that yes, the word can be used for animals. So the next slide says, advocating for a movement based on an animal rights narrative without the inclusion of human rights is a failed attempt of virtue. Imagine if I just put this in the context of Black Lives Matter. Imagine if I said advocating for a movement based on the rights of African Americans without the inclusion of animal rights is a failed attempt of virtue. Like obviously it's not reasonable to expect every single movement to just integrate other kinds of movements in their movements. There are separate movements for a reason. There is nothing wrong with going vegan to stop supporting animal exploitation, environmental degradation, or for health reasons. But veganism as a movement must encompass the human rights issues in the agricultural industry and include black, indigenous, and people of color voices. Yeah, so I completely agree that the vegan movement should include those voices. I mean, to say that it shouldn't is blatantly racist. Oh, and then if you look at the um, sources at the end, they're extremely scholarly. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I'm sure that there's gonna be a bunch of triggered vegan Twitter people that wanna cancel me for this video, just for giving a sort of nuanced view on this, but whatever. I think most of you guys hear me out in like my um, community posts when I ask you guys about this stuff and seem a bit more reasonable. So maybe just on Twitter, I'll be canceled, but on YouTube, I won't. I don't know, we'll see. I understand that some people define white veganism differently. So if you have a different definition, let me know in the comments and I'd love to just hear it and, and maybe I'll respond to it. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. Wh who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes, dude. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid